Coming up on building a protogen from scratch, we attempt brain surgery, struggle to fold some cardboard into origami, and put on a cool pair of glasses. Hi, I'm Waffles, and in the previous episode, we went ahead and put together all the pieces for a head. Our goal this episode is to add some ears, paint the frame, and attach the visor. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and pick up right where we left off. The first thing that we need to do is on the inside of our head with foam. This will allow us to place it on our mannequin, making it a lot easier to work with. We are using one inch thick upholstery foam and just kind of eyeballing all the measurements. Because eventually this will be covered with lycra, it really doesn't matter about these being perfect. Once we get all the major pieces in place, we can start working on the ears. It's important to test fit as we go along because we want to make sure this is comfortable to wear for long periods of time. I make sure to cut out the excess material on the inside of the ears so that you can still hear what's going on around you outside of the head. Finally, we add a small strip that rests on your forehead to stop everything from rattling around. I always feel like ears are one of the hardest parts of a fursuit to make right. They're quite fiddly and they never look right. Now, we do have a trick up our sleeves. We're going to use CAD to create our ears, also known as cardboard aided design. The first step is to figure out the shapes that we're going to use to make our ears. It took several prototypes to get the shapes that I wanted, so don't be shy about throwing them out and starting over. I found that looking at your cardboard templates from as many different angles as you can helps give you the best perspective in order to make them look good. Next, we can cut out small accent pieces to help represent the curvature of the ears. They definitely help make the ears pop too. Now, the very last piece we're going to add to our ear template is this little guy right here and YouTube chat, I'm holding out on you. I have a secret. So with building this head, I've been really worried about heat, especially with the electronics inside and just how heavy this guy is. He's going to get really hot really quickly and I think I have a solution to that. We're going to go ahead and try to sneak fans inside each of these ears. I've, over the years, I've had many different people ask me, why can't you put a fan inside the ear to cool down the head? And the answer is, I don't know. Me building this protogen, I really wanted to go ahead and play around with electronics more and get better at that. And what a better way to do that is to try to add fans inside our ears. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to figure out how big our fan's going to be and cut out the holes for where they're going to go. One of the reasons why these videos take so long to make is that I'm constantly waiting on parts to ship. In this case, I know that the fan we're going to use is going to be 50 millimeters square, so I'm using a postage note cut to size as a template. Finally, once everything is triple checked for measurements, we can go ahead and break out the power tools. The holes we added into the top of our head for our fans are looking really good. But before we go back to looking at that and getting all that situated, there's one other task I want to knock out, and that's painting this head. I was going to do it last episode, but I was still waiting on paint to show up. But now we have our paint, we can go ahead and knock out all of that stuff done before we add the ears. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this foam taped off so we don't spray paint it, and then let's go get it a good coat of paint. For spray paint, their quality really does matter, so spending a little bit extra on nicer paint will give you a much better look overall. Graffiti cans have more accurate caps to give you an even coat and significantly more pigment, meaning your colors will be a lot more rich. We are starting out with a warm black base, and I specifically chose a warm black to match the dark brown visor. Painting always takes way longer than you expect, not because of the actual painting, but because of all the masking, sanding, and drying required to get a good look. Next up, we're going to mask some stripes on the side of our head. Also, if you have any idea what this piece of the protogen is called, please let me know. It's like this weird kind of triangle piece. Honestly, one of the reasons why I like protogen so much is that they have all these cool shapes and angles. 
I'm painting the stripe teal because the plan is to use the teal and brown fur from the previous project. It should look really good once we get everything in place. Finally, we can give everything a good spraying of clear coat. Not only does this help protect our paint, it also makes our colors pop. I don't know about you, YouTube chat, but I'm really happy with how this head's turning out. I'm a big fan of the paint job, and I love especially all the pings of light the glossy effect has. I just think it looks really good. Now, I know I haven't talked a lot about this character or its design, but it's because I'm just kind of winging this whole project. This, this proto just to have fun, and I'm excited building it, so that's why I decided at the very last second to add this teal stripe on our visor. I, I, I think it looks really cool, and I can't wait to see how it looks with the fur on and then also the visor in place. Now, if you remember, at the very beginning of, the, of this episode, the goal was to add our ears to our fursuit head. The reason why we couldn't originally is because we needed to cut this hole. So with the hole cut and everything painted, we can go back to starting to talk about the ventilation for our fursuit head. Okay, here's the plan. So I have these little fins that fit perfectly into the holes we drilled earlier. The next step is that I wanna add some sort of a grill material to the inside. This is just um, like plastic mesh. I think technically it's used to like separate fish, but whatever, it'll get the job done perfectly. All we need to do is cut out some squares of it and then fit it on the inside of the head. Not only is that gonna stop things from getting caught in the fans, it should also help center them and hold them in place while we add the larger ear foam on top of that. Finally, we can return back to our original plan of making the ears. To start things off, let's go ahead and cut out the templates we created earlier. For the base, we're using EVA foam, and I find that it's a lot more stiff than upholstery foam. I think in total I made four separate pairs of ears, but I do think the final version looks the best. Protogens remind me of circles with their sharp edges and hard angles, so I wanted to capture that with more pointed ears. Next, we can go ahead and add the edge pieces to our ears. I find that this is the point where they start to feel like ears instead of just giant foam triangles. Now that we have all of our major pieces in place, we can go ahead and glue in our fans. To power this monstrosity, we have two 50mm computer fans with Molex connectors that will convert over to USB. These should hopefully provide us with some serious airflow while still being relatively quiet. Once everything is glued in place, we can go ahead and attach the top grill. This should prevent anything from getting caught inside of our fans. Next, we can hide our fans by attaching another piece of foam to it and the outer ears. This should shroud it in place. Finally, we can add a few small detail pieces and just generally shape and trim the foam. This ends up making it look really polished and a lot more professional. Now, I don't know about you, YouTube chat, but I'm really happy with how these turned out. It took several attempts overall, but I think the final effect is really good. Our next goal is to attach one of the most iconic pieces to the head, and that's the visor. This one comes from the Kyborg Studios parts kit we put together last episode. If you've ever wondered how they make these, you can use a vacuum former to stretch a very hot sheet of plastic over a template. Then you can submerge your plastic in boiling hot dye to give it the distinct opaque look. What I'm doing here is very carefully cutting it out using tin snips. It's important to go slow because any mistakes here will be a huge pain in the butt to fix. Speaking of mistakes that are a pain in the butt to fix, after cutting out the visor, I realized that it was about half an inch too short. Frustratingly, I followed the lines that came pre-scored into the visor from the maker, and they ended up being a lot shorter than expected. With problems like this, there aren't any real easy solutions. Instead, you just need to do the best of the worst. To fix it, I ended up shaving down to the front of the frame until the visor did fit. It's slow, delicate work that ends up being a huge pain in the butt, but it guarantees that the visor will fix, assuming we get it all lined up correctly. Attaching this visor has been a lot harder than expected, but nonetheless, I went ahead and sanded down the front of this a lot shorter. It looks just a hair goofy now, but it allows us to attach the visor with it fitting pretty darn good. It's not perfect and there's a little bit of a gap, but it's like 95% of the way there. Now, the next thing that we need to do is attach this visor to the head. 
I've seen a lot of other protogens use magnets before as a way to like snap it on and off. I think that's a really cool effect. So that's what we're gonna do here too. So here's the plan on how we're gonna attach magnets to the head so that we can just snap the visor on and off. The first thing that we're gonna do is take this little plastic from before and super glue it into all the corners of the visor, like one up top and at the bottom in the corners. Then we can take our neodymium magnets and then just glue them right in. That'll give us magnets all on the inside. There, we can put the visor on, mark where all of the new magnets are gonna go, and then just glue them on the inside. Hopefully it won't be too hard, but the first thing that we need to do is glue in all of our little corner pieces. I don't know about you, but I think it's looking really good. In order to protect our new magnetic friends, we're gonna add a felt liner to cover the edge of our visor. Not only will this protect the magnets from shattering when they come together, it'll also help the visor from moving around on the head. Then we can use a hot glue gun to attach the felt to our visor. You need to make sure not to melt the visor's plastic with the hot glue gun because it gets super hot and the plastic will melt. I don't know about you, YouTube chat, but that's damn satisfying. I'm really happy with how this protogen is turning out and the progress we made this episode. The visor ended up being a lot harder than I expected to make, but in the end, we still got it to look pretty good. Now, there are still a few things I would change, such as I think adding a piece of felt right here uh, beneath the visor would look really good, and our visor is quite a bit shorter than I would like. Now, the only way to fix that problem is to buy another one and redo this whole process, so that's completely out of the question. Always remember, perfect is the enemy of done, and this is looking pretty darn good. Now, in the next episode, I wanna start talking about the electronics and building out the face for our protogen. I personally have never done any sort of circuit building or soldering or anything like that, so I'm really excited to learn some new skills. Also, if you've made it to the end of a fursuit from scratch video, you either like building fursuits or you're interested in fursuiting in general. So, if these videos have provided you any value, please go ahead and hit the like button. It's something that's free that you can do to help support this channel, and also check if you're subscribed too. With all that being said, thank you guys again so much, and I can't wait to see you guys again soon.